So hello, Culture Factor family. Today I have Victoria Fuller with me. She has always been an artist from the time she grew up in Santa Barbara, California, and during her time as a Playboy Playmate. This is where she was also a centerfold in 1996 and in 2000. Victoria became the only artist ever licensed by Playboy. She traveled as a bunny and a professional artist in galleries around the world. Victoria became reality royalty after The Amazing Race, Girls Next Door, Kendra Show, Celebrity Fear Factor, Battle of the Network Reality Stars as well. And she also ran a licensing company called American Pop. After Hugh Hefner passed away, along with the onset of COVID, Victoria needed to use her creative talent to survive. She found NFTs in 2017 and formed Gatefold Labs in 2021. As founder and CEO of Gatefolds, she's following her dreams of transcending art into a global ecosystem and leaving no bunny behind as she shares their bond while helping them control their intellectual property with blockchain technology. And we have her today here on Culture Factor. Welcome, Victoria. Wow, nice introduction. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's part of my specialty, but you helped me with your bio. <laughs> so it's good. You hit on all the points. <laughs> good, good. So I would like to dive a little bit into process. Um, my my community here is learning about NFTs and, and emerging technologies, and we're all learning together. So what is the process of going from Canvas? to a digital asset like an NFT and, and feel free to get granular. Cause I, I tell people, you can talk to me like I'm sure. 10 years old. <laughs> well, well, if you're talking about taking a painting from a canvas and then creating a digital asset and then ledgering that to a token on the blockchain, which is making an NFT, um, then that's one thing, but really, this really the stuff that I'm doing now is all digitally painted. So not on a canvas. I've been using procreate me and the, uh, the art, the other artist and myself have been doing a hundred percent of the work on procreate. That was not intended. Uh, we were going to use a couple, we were going to use illustrator and do, you know, different graphics and put it all together, but we decided to use procreate. It's really incredible. And really the only thing, you know, everybody thinks that there's some secret, sauce or some secret thing about minting an NFT, like it's some like real secret underground stuff or something, but it's not really all it is, is um, lining everything up and um, what whatever platform you're minting on will be able to walk you through it. But the main thing to know is you have to have a wallet, a crypto wallet, and you have to have currency in that wallet. Uh, because there's gas fees whenever you mint or buy or transfer an NFT, you have to pay for that. It's there's a cost, even in creating the NFT, there's a cost. So um, for me, I have to say, if I'm going to compare the two styles of art, for me, the NFT art is way more exciting, and I'll tell you why, is because there's no cleanup. I don't have to get all the stuff, all prepared, all the art, all the paintings in the studio and the smocks and all this stuff. Right. And then there's no cleanup. So when I get done, I don't have to clean my hands and my hair and my, you know, whatever. So in that sense, you can get started right away and you can finish right away. And I think as far as time goes, having, I think it's um, works better with on my schedule because that setting up and breaking down and everything with the art is very, very time consuming. But um, that, that's what I really like about it. It's instant gratification. And if you make a mistake, you just back up. Whereas on a painting, you make a mistake, you spend like the next hour fixing that mistake, right? And then the paint has to dry. And so there's a lot more, it's a, it's a lot more unfixable fixes in real painting, whereas digital painting. Um, and also to, you know, creating NFTs and minting them, putting them out there, and it becomes a global uh, item, right? So anybody around the world can buy it. Like for me, that's really super exciting to be able to have the ability to have eyes on artwork as opposed to being in a gallery where you're really only able to get like the foot traffic, right? Like there's just a couple of people that come in or if they have a show, but not on the scale that NFTs can be seen 
where it's hundreds of millions of people looking, you know, at these marketplaces. So for that, in that sense, it's a lot more exciting. That is really cool, that process, because I took Procreate on my iPad and I've started to like play a little bit. And I hadn't thought about what you said, like about painting, but you're right. I did oil painting and it was like this massive setup and yeah. break down every single yeah. time you wanted to paint. I hadn't really thought the about that. The brushes, yeah. Right. And the cleaning it. the brushes. Yeah. It's a, it's so time consuming and I love it because it's all part of the process, mm -hmm. but sometimes it's like, I only have an hour and I want to get some work done. There's no time to get into my studio and in front of a canvas. If I have an hour, they're just, it's just not enough time. Um, it'd be a waste of time because by the time I get into it, I already have to stop. Whereas, yeah, with the digital stuff, you get in, you get out, you, I can bring it in my car. I was going to say, it's a traveling, for my daughter. right? Traveling oh yeah. Studio. No. <laughs> yeah. It has its own data plan on my super, I got the best iPad you can buy from Apple. And like, you know, if I go wait for my daughter in the car waiting to pick her up from school or whatever, I just always have that iPad on me. Um, and so I'm always able to like jump into work, mm -hmm. you know? I'm always able to, even if it's a half an hour, you get a lot done in a half an hour on digital art, you know, you can make something happen. So I definitely love the digital art. I love that. Um, I, you're, you're getting me more excited to, to yeah. get more <laughs> active with my iPad. Um, that's, that's really cool. Um, you know, in the, um, in your bio, you had talked about how you are the only artist who got the trademark rights for this. Um, do you feel pressure or empowerment from that? Are you talking about the trademark rights for Rogue Playmates? Yeah, for Rogue Playmates. Because it's okay. sort of like, um, you know, no no other bunny has that right. So you're No, you're, you're right. talking about you're talking about my licensing contract with Playboy. Right, right, right. Um yeah, my licensing contract with Playboy was gifted to me by Hugh Hefner. Um, as a means to support my art career, I really wanted to work at the magazine and he's like, no, 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 you don't want to work for the magazine. You want to, you want to be a real artist. So he thought a licensing contract, which I didn't even know what that was at the time, licensing contract would be really, um, amazing. Cause for one, I would be making history. I'm the only artist in history still to this date that's ever had a licensing contract with Playboy. Um, and I'm the only one with that, with the, you know, they have a licensing department for like shoes and handbags and whatever. So I had, not only did I have a licensing contract as the official artist, but I also was a licensee of Playboy. So I, um, and that also branched off into other stuff, but that, that was, I had it for 11 years and that was probably one of the best things to happen to my art career because it not only gave me huge credibility, but it also gave me the rights to, and it was kind of a crutch really, to be honest with you, but to be able to have all these iconic assets, uh, images to work with and put in my artwork. So it was as though I was also Playboy in a way, right? Like mm -hmm. so I'm painting Playboy, play, you know, everybody recognizes it. Um, the only downfall was, is that I got a little pigeonholed into being the Playboy artist, which um, that's fine, but certainly not what I want. Um, going forward with this project, I do have the trademark for Road Playmates and Gatefolds and Gatefold Labs LLC. I have the trademark for all those. Okay. So that's well, very exciting. Yeah. Thank you for clarifying that because <laughs> yeah, there was yeah. a, a, a lot of uh, licensing and trademarks. I got that yeah, yeah. mixed up. So thank you. And um, so I guess maybe there was a, a little bit of pressure in that you, um, like you said, you felt like you were a little bit pigeonholed. But mm -hmm. I was thinking maybe more on the side of the NFT rogue bunnies, um, the pressure there, do you, do you feel as though it's your responsibility then to be able to help all of these bunnies, yeah. you know, get to the next level uh, or, or is it, sorry, is it equal parts, maybe empowerment and pressure? I think, I think I do have, I think there is a lot of pressure because there, because it's, because I don't, I do want to, um, do well. I don't want to let the girls down. You know, they, they are all entrusting me and believing, um, in me in this project. So I certainly don't want to let them down. So there is pressure in like best execution of this product. So there, there is, that is on my mind all the time. Um, but, uh, 
yeah, I mean, yes, there is pressure to, to do well and, and have it and have it do well. Cause I think there's also an expectation because we're playmates and, um, we are, we are usually well-received, easily received, you know, doors open. Um, we don't usually have a problem getting, you know, press and like all these other things. So I feel like the project in itself has really good legs to, um, build a community around. Mm -hmm. So I do, I do feel strongly about that. So, I mean, yes, there is pressure. I don't want to let anybody down, but I do feel really confident that it's a solid product and a solid, um, project. Um, it it is. Gonna... I've, I've seen your work already. You have released some of the bunnies and the work is really special and, and fun. And um, I know you've created a, a, a robust discord community where you can, you know, keep in touch with everybody and yeah. guide them through this process. Um, you do regular onboarding with that, um, as well as holding uh, moderating rooms and talking to them. That's a lot, um, especially being the CEO and founder. Do you, do you find it hard to play all of these roles or are you okay with that? Um, it's a lot more work that I had anticipated because what I'm finding is um, because everything's, you know, coming up, being developed, everything's happening. So I feel like I got to really keep my eyes on everything. So I feel like I'm... I don't want to say doing other people's jobs. I'm not doing other people's jobs, but I'm, I'm, you know, constantly checks and balances, you know, all day long. So I feel like I'm spread super thin. Um, but I know, you know, we're just finishing up the art. And once the art is complete, which is we're rounding that corner for this first drop. Once that art is complete, that is a huge weight because now we can do all the testing and doing all the stuff that we need to do to make sure that the NFTs, you know, that the minting is right and all that stuff is correct. But yeah, I feel like, I feel like I'm growing a team that I can count on. So I think it'll get, I don't think it'll ever get easier because there's always going to be something, right? There's always going to be a roadblock. There's always going to be the next thing that has to happen, the next big development or whatever. And you got to keep evolving. If it starts to get easy, that's when I think you settle into everything's fine. You don't really need to do anything. And I think that, I think that would be the kiss of death. <laughs> so as long as I have a little sure. angst. I feel like I'm inspired and motivated to like, you know, do my best. So I don't mind a little bit of pressure at all. No, I, I think it's, it's good. It's kind of like when uh, somebody's nervous before an interview, I, I usually say yeah. it's because they're ready. You know, they're a little bit of nerves is normal. Um, I, I think it's really cool that you're helping the playmates reinvent themselves too, like with this niche. Um, all of these ladies, you know, time has gone by. They're all modern day entrepreneurs themselves, right? They're, they're doing all mm -hmm. sorts of things. Um, and obviously their lives don't resemble the Playmate era anymore. So what, um, how, how is this project complementing their business? Like, are they using their NFT in some way in their businesses? Like, do you have a, an example? Um, well, we haven't gotten to that yet, but I am very interested. You know, there are no men in this NFT community. I mean, there are no women in this NFT community. It is literally all men, as you know. And so, you know, that was one of the reasons why I start, wanted to start this project was to not only bring all the girls back, but also to onboard a huge group of really smart, intelligent women into the Web3 community. Um, but it has been a challenge. I, I, I onboard every single girl personally and make sure to one-on-one -on -one talk to them and explain to them everything that I feel like they need to know to get them to kind of be at a place where they understand what an NFT is, what the utility is, what blockchain is, um, how it works, how, what their part in is. But overall, I think this project um, these women are, they're mothers, they're entrepreneurs. And I think it's a very complimentary, secondary, um, I don't know what you would call it. It's not a job, but you know, a secondary income, a secondary project, something that they can add to their life. That's not going to be, they don't have to drive anywhere. They don't have to put on makeup. They don't have to do a new photo shoot. They don't have to, um, you know, they don't have to fly anywhere. They don't have to, you know, whatever it is. So I, I, that's the beauty of this whole virtual, it's a virtual world, this NFT community is very virtual. 
So you could be anywhere. You can run a business on NFT. You can be involved and have a community. And it doesn't matter if you're in Alaska or if you're in New York City. So I think it is a huge, um, I think this project has been a really great thing to introduce these girls to because I'm really hoping that they'll lock on and get more involved with trading NFTs. I've been talking to a couple of girls about how to trade NFTs and how to get involved because I really think there's actually really a lot of money to be made in the privacy of your own home on spare time. You know what I mean? Like it's, you can make whatever you want out of it. I do hope the girls do continue to promote their NFTs, but to be honest with you, I keep, I keep conveying the message that we're a team. So it's not about, I'm just trying to shill my one NFT of Victoria Fuller. I really want to shill as, as, as a, as a group, Mm -hmm. as a collection. You know, if someone comes in to collect, one of the girls made a point. She's like, you know, if someone comes in to collect just because I'm promoting my NFT, they're going to want hers and hers and hers and hers. That's the point of a collection, right? It's like, especially Playboy fans, they like to collect. They like to collect the magazines, the autographs, the whatever, all those things. So this is no different. And and I think that we'll be collected as a, as a group, as a team together. So that's my hope. I love that. Um, I kind of got off your question, but (laughs) no, no, but actually I'm going to back you up a little bit. You know, this is an educational uh, platform as well. I am trying to teach people Um, and I know you're probably thoroughly exhausted from going through this exercise, but let's just (laughs) say you were onboarding me. Okay. Yeah. And you were explaining NFT um, Mm -hmm. and blockchain. How, how would you share that with somebody like me if I didn't know anything about it? and the um, the advantages of trading. Could I ask you to like almost onboard me? Sure, sure. So what I like to do with every girl is I like to um, start out real basic with, um, do, you know, do you know what an NFT is? So I talk about what an NFT is. And you know, people are always talking about why would I want something I can't hold and well, I can just screenshot it. I can, you know, like it's a digital file, who cares? And I kind of equate it to like, you go to the Louvre and you see the Mona Lisa, right? You know, that Mona Lisa is priceless. It's got, it's got Da Vinci's signature on it. Um, It's in the Louvre, right? But if you go to the gift shop and you buy a poster of the Mona Lisa and you put it up in your house, you're not fooling anybody that it's not the real Mona Lisa. There's no (laughs) smart contract that shows ownership or anything. It's really just a, a poster. It doesn't, it doesn't have any real value. And that's what fungible is, is fungible is if you have $5 and you, if someone else has a $5 bill, you could switch it, right? You can give them the five ones and they could give you the five because it's fungible. We both know that those things equal each other. Well, the Mona Lisa or NFTs, they don't, they're not fungible because they don't have something that's the exact equivalent to it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We can mm-hmm. set a price and people can pay it, but honestly, there is no value that's attached to it, like a $5 bill, the fungibleness of it. So the other part about an NFT that's also so important is that with it, with this token ledgered on the blockchain, it can never be changed, can never be modified, it can't be lied about. And the coding that goes into it um, all indicates uh, ownership and authenticity. So when you have that ownership and you know that it's authentic, you know that it's created scarcity in that NFT and it creates a value about it. So the other things to know about an NFT is what's the utility. So utility describes essentially what can the NFT do. So if you go to the movie theater and you buy a movie ticket and it's beautiful and it's got the pictures on it and, but what's the utility of it? It's so you can go in that movie theater and enjoy the movie and have an experience. And like, so the movie ticket isn't just like it's pretty and you're going to put it up on your bulletin board as a keepsake. It really has a use for it. And, and NFTs are the same way. Um, some NFTs are, NFTs are just for looking at and they're pretty pictures. I think that's a little bit of thing of the past now because we've gotten into gamifying um, NFTs and buying, selling and trading has become like such a huge you know, commodity. Um, but in and itself, the NFT has to have, um, well, they all do, they have to have utility they have the ownership, they have the scarcity, and they are ledgered. So there's, there's, like I said, there's no way to change it. So if you own an NFT and it's in your wallet, there's a contract that you can go to on the ledger that specifically shows your wallet as the owner. 
So no one can say that they own that NFT. So that's, that's a kind of a scattered version of what I would say. I go deeper, deeper, deeper into stuff because it's usually like an hour long um, description of everything. And then I talk about the project and, and try to bring it full circle. But basically an NFT in itself is a digital, is a digital asset that's ledgered to a token on the blockchain. And um, yeah. That's and perfect. we've only scratched the surface as to what we can do with an NFT. Like right now, the prominent thing that everybody's doing is art, music, art, photography. So it's very, it's a very much an artistic platform, but there is many other phenomenal uses for an NFT. And in time we will be, we will be implementing the NFT into everything in our lives. It, it'll become very mainstream. So this conversation of like, what is it? And what do I, like, this will be, that'll just be like the internet. You know, we were trying to explain what the internet was when it came out. I mean, I remember the day it came out, <laughs> you know, the internet <laughs> launched and, and um, people were having such a hard time and Oprah had a show and she's like trying to explain what the internet is and how it functions. And like, it, it seems so magical, you know what I mean? Like, oh my God, this amazing, weird, like new medium that we have in our life. And I don't think we ever anticipated that it would become so important to us. You know what I mean? A mm -hmm. .com, a website, everything. It's like, if you don't have that, I mean, you don't even really have a business, right? I mean, if you don't have a .com, it's like, you're not even legit right. pretty much. So <laughs> NFTs, so I think will be the same way. I think they'll very much be a, a huge part of our life. And so yeah. we had we had Oprah to tell us what Web two was, and now we have Holly Shannon and Victoria Fuller telling everybody what yeah. Web three is. Uh, Look at to that! Tell you what Web three is? We're like a dream I think, team. <laughs> I think people use that Web three. They throw it around, and it's like, what does that really mean? What is Web three? So I mean, I yeah, kind of it's describe just, it. So when I describe to people, and maybe you have a better description, so feel free to correct me, but. Um, web one was text. Like when, when we were first introduced to uh, computers, it was all documentation to read, essentially. It was text. And web two was read and write. So now we were able to write and contribute to what was on there. And of course, the birth of social media, where there was actually content being put in, in that space. And, and web three to me is read, write, and own or ownership. So again, we still have that back and forth, but now with um, all of the uh, people taking back their data and their rights, we're getting into ownership and, and working with blockchain is also an ownership model. So I feel like yeah. that's, th that's my like Cliff Notes version of web one, two, and three for me, but uh, maybe you might want to elaborate or change something. No, yeah, no, that's, that's great. Yeah, that's definitely great. Um, well, I, we don't I to, think, yeah, yeah. We don't have to change I, it. I, I, I like, I like, I like your version a lot. Simple. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so we've figured out now how you onboard, and I do understand that's probably um, a deeper dive with it, but I'm, yeah. th I thank you, our, my listeners thank you, because I, I think- I no, you did great because I think like we all learn differently. Yeah. And on on this show, I ask everybody to, I ask them similar questions like that because, you know, it's like learning math. We all learn it differently, you know. Um, anyway, so thank you for that. Um, one of the things that you brought up and it's very uh, prevalent in, in the NFT world is the conversation around roadmaps and utilities. Mm -hmm. So... Mm -hmm. I, if you could give a little bit of an explanation sure. on those, I'd love that. And if you could share um, what your overall goals are um, and your goals and what utilities maybe you're going to have built in, because I think people don't know the full uh, picture of what Victoria Fuller and Gatefold has in mind sure. for the Rogue Bunny. So I know we just keep talking the NFT art, but what's the bigger picture? So the bigger picture is, um, so, so you asked two questions you asked what, about asked a roadmap a and then you asked about utility. So roadmap refers to what the NFT, what, what the future of the NFT is. 
So you as a community, as an NFT holder, you want to understand what the roadmap is because you want to understand where you're going with this NFT. Like, are you just buying a pretty picture and then it's just sitting in your wallet? Maybe you'll sell one day. Or is that NFT going to do something for you? Is it going to bring you somewhere, give you something? So, um, so that's the utility is the function that, that, you, that the NFT can do. The roadmap is laying out the future timeline of like what it's, what the possibilities of it are and where, where it's going to be going. And, um, and also the project, you know, the roadmap also refers to where the project is going. So as far as our project, as far as our NFTs go, our, our NFTs are not only beautiful art, but the utility of it is to create access. And the access is essentially when you hold one of our NFTs, it's the same as holding a gold membership key where you can get into the mansion in the metaverse. The mansion in the metaverse is um, a place where all the playmates can go and we'll have events, we'll have live events, we'll have music, we'll have gallery shows, we'll have parties, we'll have fashion shows, whatever it is that we want to host in that space that they will be able to get into, into all of those. Um, you don't have to pay, you don't have to, whatever, you just automatically get in because you're, you would connect your wallet and it would show that you have the NFT and then you would be able to get in. So, um, so really it's about, the utility is about creating access to interact with the playmates. So, um, and, a, and a lot of the NFTs that are out there now is about like Board Ape Yacht Club, why are they so popular? Why did they do so well? So the imagery is cute. It's low resolution. So the, you can't, you know, it's, it's a small resolution. So you're not getting a big, beautiful image. But what they created was an exclusive um, community that you could only have access to if you were one of the holders. And it became one of the first NFT series to kind of create that really strong community. And so that has been kind of like the standard now for any of these projects. If they, if someone doesn't have a solid roadmap, if someone doesn't have uh, an engaging community, if someone's, you know, then potentially it's not probably a good NFT to purchase or to um, buy into because they're, you know, they're going to sell that, they're going to sell the first drop and then they're going to just, kind of, it's called rug pulling where they kind of just leave. It's happened a couple of times. Um, there was a woman recently and she, she sold out, she got, she had a community, she was really active, she sold out. And then she basically said, sorry, I'm not going to fulfill any of the roadmap or do anything. I'm done. It's too much work. So she made the $2 million, everybody's money who bought into her whole thing. And then, and then she left, she pulled the rug. So I think what people look for now is uh, the security of feeling like they're buying into something that's lasting a community that's worth um, being a part of and that's a real community, you know, making friends. I mean, more friendships have been made off of these communities than, I mean, I can't even tell you over the last year with all these NFT communities and the discord and everything. Um, and so that's kind of the, that's really the most important thing um, with any NFT that someone might collect or look into is to make sure they have a good roadmap and to make sure they have good utility. So that's ours in a nutshell. Our yeah, utility is about access. Mm -hmm. So that should be really interesting. Uh, the parties in the metaverse. I will definitely come check that out. I think uh, you, you and I and uh, probably some other people have a few ideas for that. So we're going to have to see how we can play in the metaverse. But um, we, we also have, oh, sorry, go ahead. You were going to say. No, that. I was going to say it's also multi-chain. It's not going to be in any one um, as well as already with this project, with the next drop that's ha happening is on a different blockchain. So we're, we're multi-chain and multi-metaversal. I don't know if that's a word, multi-metaversal. <laughs> but we will be, <laughs> cr we will be cross chain. One. Yeah, <laughs> we will be a cross-chain uh, product for sure. We'll be on, on multiple blockchains. I think that's a good idea because I think- I do too. It, it seems as though- um, people have a real affinity for certain chains. So, um, well, they right? do. Yeah. And I think it's important that you, I think it's important for a project to scale, to be on multiple chains, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. I think if you're on one chain and one audience, you know, like you, you can grow to a certain point, but I think, I think being on multiple chains is the key. And I think it's going to happen more and more with, you know, because some platforms offer different options or um, functionality than other marketing platforms, market platforms for the NFT. So there's, you know, there's pretty huge variety on how to get your stuff out there. Well, I think what you want from it. You could kind of liken it to even using social media platforms. You know, you're going to have a different audience on Twitter than you're going to have yes. on Instagram. So it's kind of the same thing. And and I think it's it's a brilliant plan on your part. <laughs> um, that being said, um, we are going to be launching, right, launching a party for the Rogue Bunnies together um, in April. I think we're, we're not quite solid on the date yet, but I think you said the presale might be the 15th and then yeah. the launches on the yeah. 17th. Yeah. Um, in fact, while you look that up, we're going to be uh, streaming this live on the Teatro network uh, on the Bitcoin I, SV protocol blockchain. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, well, I'm just being, I'm just realizing that that Friday is good Friday and that Sunday is Easter Sunday. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what, so we everybody. Might have to change it again. <laughs> when this launches, uh, you're you're not hearing it this second, the actual date. But by the time this in episode, <laughs> yeah, when this episode launches on Culture Factor, and you go into the show notes, we will have the proper date, and we will have the link for you to buy tickets to come to the live stream on the Teatro Network on the Bitcoin SV uh, blockchain. And it'll be a rare opportunity to meet um, all of the bunnies that have their own unique um, NFT rogue art by Victoria Fuller. Um, We'll hear their stories. We'll party with them. You'll bring yourself, you know, a little glass of bourbon or champagne. And and, uh, it'll be an opportunity to uh, be in the space with them and learn about them. And um, I will be moderating and hopefully... Um, I'll be able to ask different questions. So if you listen to this podcast prior to this, um, feel free to direct message me or email me questions you might have, um, because I think it'll be really interesting to learn about everybody a little bit. And um, yeah, I don't know how many broke bunnies will be there possibly, Victoria, where, where, where are you at in numbers now in terms of your art? Um, I'm not sure how many will show up. I mean, uh, one of our last Twitter spaces, there was 24 playmates there. So we had a pretty good, that's a pretty good turnout, I would say. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's been about between 15 and 20 playmates every um, Twitter space, every reveal. We're doing a reveal every Monday and Thursday okay. until we get past these 12 girls. So we have like three more to go. Um, so we're doing these reveals and um, yeah. Yeah. So total, um, total NFTs that you have are oh. Oh, 12. So there's 12 girls that it's mm-hmm. based off of. So there's okay. 12 different bases, okay. but there's going to be 9,600 NFTs in this, in this first drop. Okay. Cause it's generative. Cause it's generative. Uh-huh. Can you when explain we talk about, quickly? <laughs> oh, so a generative drop is essentially, so a lot of people heard about board apes and basically think about it as like paper dolls. So there's a base and then you can change the clothes and the hair, like a paper doll, like the girl's only in one position, but you know, when you put all the paper clothes on and everything, it kind of, you know, whatever. So it's kind of that same thing. So the artist creates the team creates a bunch of traits, eyes, nose, mouth, clothing, hair, hats, backgrounds, colors, and you put it into a randomizer, a coding system, a web three developer person would do this. And you tell it how many randomized um, individual NFTs you want spit out. So you could do 500, you could do 10,000. I don't know why 10,000 seems to be the number for these series. I have no idea what the logic is behind that, but it just seems like that's kind of the magic sauce for some reason. But um, so then you tell it how many you want and then Um, In our case, we don't actually get to see any of the NFTs until they are minted. So when people go to the mint day, they'll connect their wallet to our website, our interface, and they will connect their wallet and they'll have a maximum of two or three or whatever it is that they can purchase. 
and they'll be able to purchase those. And what they'll be receiving is a placeholder. So it'll appear, your purchase will appear, your NFT will appear in OpenSea on your profile there, on your wallet profile, but you won't be able to see what the NFT is for like three days. But um, yeah, so nobody knows what they get until the reveal. So it truly is a blind purchase. Even for us, we will be minting um, just to have in our own wallet. I have to buy my, my own product myself, but I'll buy a, probably a hundred of them to have so I can give away as giveaways and like have or whatever. And I'll be seeing them for the first time on that date. That's so exciting. right now what we're doing is we're testing. I know it's exciting. Actually, it's we're doing it's testing like, right now. It's like not knowing the sex of the baby before it's born. <laughs> it is. It's a little, and we've had good testing. So we've tested it and all the random things come out. And then we got one with no head. And so I was like, oh, I don't know. Like we have to figure out. Mary Antoinette. <laughs> so, yeah, Mary Antoinette. <laughs> and that'll probably be the one that's like the one that everybody wants is the one that has no head or something, you know? So it's kind of, it's really interesting. It's really fun though. So all the NFTs that we're making right now in the randomizer, we're not using, they're all going to be scrapped. Mm -hmm. So we're just seeing that the randomizer works and that the traits work and all that stuff. But it's really fun and exciting because you don't know what you're going to get. And it really is random. That's so really cool. it's like kind of that. fun seeing all your artwork in different versions that you're like, oh, I wouldn't have thought of that, you know, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. 10,000 of them, you know, going to get quite a few. I love that. That's really great. So um, we're going to have all of the links in the show notes on how to connect with Victoria on all of her socials. We're going to have information about our launch party coming up so that people can buy tickets and join the live stream on the Chatro network. And uh, it should be really cool. And once we get these dates, actually, we'll start um, putting them on social media together so that um, people don't miss the pre-sale uh, so that they can wait to see what their baby looks like. Um, and I think it'll be really cool. So. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think it'll be after, now that I think about it, now that he told me that um, Easter Sunday is the 17th, I don't want to do it on Easter Sunday. No, 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 no. Well, we want no. people, people will be with their families, maybe having yeah. dinner and we want them to show up to our live stream and so be able to, the week after. yeah, have a little bit of time. And, and so we'll make this happen and, um, we'll, we'll work with the dates however we need to. Um, but I do want to thank you very much, Victoria, for coming on Culture Factor oh, and sharing your story. Thank you. This is great. Thank you, Holly. Yeah. So we will, uh, we will meet uh, at our launch party and in the metaverse, I think. Yes, definitely in the metaverse. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you well, so much. I'm often asked, does my business need a podcast? My answer is yes, that nothing else is the fast track into thought leadership and being established and seen as the expert in your industry as podcasting. What's increasingly evident is that it's a branding machine. It kicks doors open for you to have conversations with leaders. It creates a pathway to partnerships and connections on a deeper level. You will not be your industry's best kept secret. Your ideas and business will have global reach. Go to hollyshannon.com to launch your podcast now.